The market is shifting in the Agile space, especially for Agile leaders and coaches. If you're looking to become an Agile coach or apply for any position in the Agile leadership space this year, there are five skills you can't overlook. While leadership was never a beginner's space, now you are expected to be this multidimensional leader, a leader doer, one that can coach and inspire and at the same time roll up your sleeves and show how it's done when necessary. And that brings us to the very first skill. You probably know some Agile frameworks like Scrum, Kanban, or SAFE. That is a good start, but it's not enough to be a successful Agile coach in 2024 and beyond. Why? Well, because frameworks are too generic and a little bit rigid. They don't fit your specific context and needs. You adapt your teams and your organizations to them. They also force you to adopt roles that may not make sense for your organization, making things a little bit more complicated than they need to be. You may wonder if frameworks are so bad, why do so many agile organizations use them? And why do some organizations that ignore frameworks seem to do so well? The answer is very simple. Frameworks are not the solution by themselves. The underlying patterns of agility are what you need to understand. Once you do, you can even create your own agile framework. To really solve the problems that limit your agility, which means your ability to adapt, to change quickly and smoothly, you need uh, more foundational knowledge. A lot of people just try agile, whatever that means for them, but to succeed in giving agility, adapt adaptability to your organization, here are, uh, for example, some applied theory that would elevate your practice. The first, queuing theory, to reduce your lead time, cycle time, and avoid delays in your delivery. Basically, how to fix the mess when there's too much work going on at once. Another one is system thinking, which you probably heard. System thinking uh, is, you know, offer you the tools to understand the complexity of your environment and how to deal with it, considering the pesky human factors that many people ignore. Then the next one is, it could be theory of constraints, which is something that you can use to identify and eliminate the bottlenecks that slow you down. And on the same verge, I guess you could go for value stream mapping to see the big picture of your organization and how to optimize it and reduce all sorts of waste. And then my favorite, which is about the planning space, preserving options. It is a big part of adaptive planning because let's face it. Yes, you do need to plan in Agile, my friend. Now, these are just some examples and you don't have to be an expert in all these practices, but you do have to know they exist and how to use them at some capacity. So you must get out of the generic agile bubble that many people are stuck in thinking that a two day certification is enough, thinking that your daily scrum must take 15 minutes. So don't worry, I'm here to help. I've been coaching Agile teams and leaders since 2012, and I've developed a model that helps you understand those key patterns that I mentioned for success and failure in Agile. Agile is in the end, a pattern language. And this model of mine, I call it the simple Agile, and I will be sharing some of it with you very soon here on the channel, so stay tuned for more. Which reminds me, this is probably a good time for you to subscribe if you haven't already and to have the bell click there so that you can notify when new videos come up. Now let's continue. Coaching and facilitation techniques. That's what's coming next. So I mentioned inspire and coach as some ability for the, the leaders of today. So well, it comes as no surprising that the skills of coaching and facilitation are mentioned here. These are not skills that you can just claim to have overnight. You can not just proclaim yourself a coach, declare yourself a coach. These are skills that you need to learn and practice constantly so that they evolve. And those are skills that you practice with others. You can't practice them alone. Um, they are definitely skills that many people get wrong. So if you level set here, what do I mean by coaching? By coaching, I am talking about professional coaching. That could be ICF, Standard, and others. And it's a, a, a methodology to help people grow and achieve their goals. You do not have to be certified by the ICF by any means. For example, I am, but you don't have to. But you do have to know how to be fully present with people, how to listen deeply, and how to ask better questions. Now, what do I mean by facilitation? 
I mean the skill of helping groups of people work through conflict uh, and make quality decisions, for example. As a facilitator, you observe and you point out what is happening in the group and you make sure everyone has a chance to speak and to be heard. Why are these skills so important? Because they help you solve problems in a collaborative and effective way. Many specialists think that they can just tell people what to do when they see a problem, but that doesn't work. People need to understand and agree on what the problem is first. So let me give you an example here to land this point. Here is a team who says they have too much work, okay? What can an agile specialist say in this case? They can say that the team needs to limit their work in progress, the famous whip. And then the specialist goes on to bore people with how to prioritize their work. And I say bore because most people already know that in some way, yet they still don't do the whip management thing. A coach will be curious and ask, what do they mean by too much work? And a facilitator will make sure that everyone shares their perspective on the matter and summarizes it for the group. A coach will keep asking questions that help that group discover and understand what's truly happening. And in this scenario, the team then will realize that they actually need to reorganize themselves differently because they rely so much in this one senior person who is always overburdened. That is a real scenario, by the way. So truth to be told, when it comes to it, it's much harder to ask questions than to just tell people what to do and give an advice. It can become a great personal challenge for you on top of being a great professional skill if you learn this ability to coach. So there you go. Coaching and facilitation are your allies in those situations. And the next skill is emotional intelligence. If you find hard to ask more, to listen more, you are not alone. It is normal to want to solve a problem for yourself or for others, but to reach that state of curiosity, you need to cultivate your emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence or EQ is not just about being curious though. It's about being aware of yourself and of others. It's about understanding and managing the emotions and the relationships in your team and communicating with empathy, resolving conflict and building trust, all these things. Remember the example I gave before about the specialists who came in and told the team how to deal with too much work in progress? Well, that was a case of low EQ, my friend. The specialist was not curious. The specialist was not empathetic. They were not aware. They just assumed taught and solved for things and maybe even try to show off a bit if you ask me but that's not how you solve problems in agile the problems you face are not super simple and clear in your face they are complex and subtle you saw how the specialists missed the real problem but let's say even if they got the problem right the team would not listen why because the specialists had no report no connection no respect you don't want to be like that. You want to be someone who people trust and seek for help. You want to be someone who can lead and inspire. How do you do that? You start with yourself as always. Self-awareness in this case, that's the first domain of EQ. You need to know yourself before you can know others. So you need to reflect on your feelings, thoughts and actions. You need to ask for feedback and most importantly, learn from it. Self-awareness is the foundation of EQ. Once you have that, you can work on all the other domains um, for communication. For instance, you could explore the SCARF model by David Rock. And in fact, for the one, I um, have a previous video that you can find helpful and I'll, I'll post it here and in the description of, the, of this video down below. In any case, emotional intelligence is not something you have or don't have. It's something you can develop and improve. It's a skill and like any skill you can practice and master. Think of it as a scale from zero to 100. Where are you on that scale? How can you move up one point? What will that look like? The next skill you need to master is a combination of agile leadership and change management. What does that mean? It's about leading change 
in helping others navigate change. It means that you are skilled in crafting and helping others do it, a clear vision, a clear goal, and set clear expectations. And by doing that, you can empower teams to be more autonomous and more effective. It's the ability to paint the picture, so to speak, so that people can see what the future looks like. Just think of it, you can't achieve a fuzzy goal because you never know when you hit it. So for example, if people wanna be more efficient, you could ask them, a few questions like those. Um, who sees the difference when you are that efficient? What are you doing that is so different now that you are that efficient? How and why does efficiency matter so much? And how efficient do you even want to be? Can you quantify it? Uh, and maybe another one. Have you been like that? Have you been that efficient before? And so on. Also, Understanding how to set boundaries for goal and change is a great skill in this mix. Imagine boundaries as the containers where change happens. You could ask, how much change can happen here? It's the famous appetite for change. How far can the team go? Who is involved? People need to know their limits so that they know in uh, what and who to ask for support. And lastly, you are good in defining and helping others define clear metrics for success because you cannot improve things that you are not measuring. If you improve on something, there is a current state in the future state and a way to assess the gap. This clarity in negotiation will help you overcome resistance, which is everywhere when we talk about change. Change is constant, but also hard and scary. You need to help your team and your organization cope with it. A great way is to know how to design and to run change experiments, not big and risky transformations. Not all change needs to be that disruptive. So I recommend you learn at least one change model. Uh, it could be Adcar, it could be the Shines model, Carter Eight Steps, or the Satir Curve, my favorite. These models, they can help you understand the stages, the challenges, and even strategies of change, especially in organizations. If you want to learn more, check out my course, Coaching Agile Transitions. It's all about leading and managing change in Agile. It is a practical and a hands-on course. I will for sure offer it once this year. I'm not sure if I'll offer it any other time. So join my Agile circle to get notified when it happens. As an Agile coach and leader, you are the role model for agility in your behavior, in your adaptability to change. If you can make it, you will be well on your way of establishing a culture of continuous improvement by way of being. Lastly, I'm strong strongly encouraging you to go deep into your business domain, be it healthcare, government, technology. You can't use Agile as a one-size-fits-all solution for every industry. That's what many of those Agile and digital transformations did wrong. They were too generic and too impractical, really. You need to understand the specific challenges and opportunities of your industry. Remember what I said, you were also a leader doer in the beginning of this video? So here is how. When people are open to options, but have no clue on what to do, then they are looking straight at you to be able to show them how it's done. So from learning first how to hold back, be more aware, understand and connect with others, listen, and all the skills from before, Finally, in this fifth skill, we are talking about the level of mastery where you actually bring your insights. You tell people what you know, what, you know, tell them what you do. Yes, you are allowed to. And it is based on true, proven experience, yours and others in your field. So because you can and should be learning from others to speed up your impact, there is too much generic advice out there from what to do in sprint, how to manage whip, etc. But when you give advice, and Agile coaches do give advice every now and again, you must be very specific and your advice must be tailored in what you're saying. Nobody hires Agile coaches as motivational speakers. They hire you for expertise and this level of mastery will be a key differential moving forward in the realm of Agile change makers. If you wanna know more about the Agile Coach as an advisor, by the way, I do have a video that I'm gonna be putting here for you to check out later. So in conclusion, 
Don't sweat if these skills seem like a lot now. Whenever I find things seems overwhelming or too much, I just go for the next best step. You could use the following questions to decide where to hone in on for your next cycle of learning. So the first one could be, which of these skills seems the easiest or one I already have some practical knowledge in? Double down on the stuff you already know. Or ask, which one of these am I severely lacking on? So that's also worth investigating. Or you could ask yourself, which one of these could create the most impact for me right now, where I am, my situation, my job, my team, etc. Or you could ask yourself, which of these skills get me curious or excited? Because there's power in respecting that. So when you have command of the intricacies of your industry, combined with your awareness of coaching and other EQ abilities, you are setting yourself for so much professional success in the years to follow, my friend. So I hope this video was useful. Feel free to ask me questions or add your insights in the comments because I do check them and I do answer them. And I will see you soon on the next video. Bye.